Shamandaro Kurabaso Tarabha. Precious friends, beloved people of God, what is happening? It's been a hot minute. Love and blessings to you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Ah, oh, come on, friends. Jump in the room. Jump in the broadcast. Let me know where you are watching from. Comment below where you are watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. Today I want to talk about the great deception that's trying to overtake this world and, and come over America. And even the church, that's the worst part. This spirit of deception, this great deception that's trying to overtake the church. Amen. So I want to talk about that, but uh, let me know where you're watching from. Tag somebody, share this on your wall, give us some hearts and likes. Of course, it's September 11th, y'all. And uh, may we never forget the horrible, uh, atrocious terrorist attack. Of course, it was planned from the inside. It was an inside job, of course. And a number of prophetic uh, voices, prophets, have said that even from that day to now, it's been an open window of judgment against America, where God is slowly removing his hand of protection from this country. So these are all signs. I want you to comment signs. These are all signs of the times or signs that we must be aware of. These are signs, and I believe God is trying to get your attention. Alert, alert. Alert, alert. He's trying to get our attention. Amen. Because God wants us to truly be fixated, fixated on Him. And what really matters, my friends, what really matters is souls. It's the gospel. It's, amen, it's the love mercy. It's the love truth. It's the hate and justice. That's what really matters. Amen. But anyways, there is uh, something unusual happening. And of course, it's the last Hebrew month of this year, 5784. It's the last Hebrew month of this Hebrew year, 5784. So bam, bam, get ready for God to up. He's going to show up and show off this month in September. Do you believe it? Amen. It's the ninth month of the Gregorian calendar, ninth of 2024, and it takes nine months for a baby to be born. So I want to declare a new birthing. Supernatural birthings are going to take place in your life this month in Jesus' name. Amen. God's going to do something fresh and new in the mighty name of Yeshua, if you believe it. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, let me know where you're watching from. Let's keep building up the room. Hallelujah. It's been a hot minutes since I've been here on Facebook. Amen. And uh, it is 7.05 p.m. Pacific Standard. Rob Feller, good to see you. Melissa Feller, Marilyn, Lynette E. Young, Brenda. Yes, Cece. Hello, Juan Martina Chanel. Amy from the Philippines. God bless you. Uh, Patricia from Charlotte, North Carolina. Andrew from Michigan. Praise the Lord. You know, have you realized today, especially today, there's been some weird censorship or some shadow banning on Meta, especially today. But we're going to break through that in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Alvaro, bless you. Praise God. From Temecula, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, yeah, Nashville, Tennessee, wonderful. North Carolina, awesome. Love to come and minister in North Carolina, Tennessee next year. But, you know, um, 
I just came back from a seven week trip, seven countries in seven weeks. And I'm telling you friends, I'm not gonna go over everything that I shared on my YouTube live a couple days ago, but you need to watch that. Because I have a miracle testimony, mega, mega miracle testimony. I'm not gonna divulge into that or repeat myself here today for certain purposes, but you can go watch that. But man, I just came back from seven weeks touring, seven different countries. Hallelujah. And I'm back here in stateside. Tomorrow, I drive up to Sacramento. I know, it's quite a drive from L.A. The capital of the state. Amen. And, uh, you know, I'm a SoCal boy. I'm a California, California, Los Angelino. But, you know, there's always been this rivalry with North and South California. But you already know <laughs> that South California is the best, right? Anyways, let's go Dodgers and Lakers, except for LeBron James. But anyways, I'm going up to Sacramento tomorrow. So this whole weekend, I'm ministering in Northern California, Modesto, Sacramento, and Gout, California. So come and see me. The next week, I'll be in Tijuana and Mexicali in the glory with the tacos. Somebody say, ay, 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 ay. Or as the Hispanic song goes, ay, ay, ay. It's going to be bombastic. It's going to be fabuloso. We got two crusades in Tijuana and in Mexicali. Hallelujah. With a, a band called Mani Montes. And this guy is like one of the top uh, Christian Hispanic rappers. So legend in the Hispanic Christian rap game. And we got Cairo Worship. I mean, they are like the upper room in the Hispanic world. Millions of followers. So we got two stadium crusades next week. So keep me in prayer. Por favor, oración por mí y mi grupo y mi ministerio. Por favor, necesito. Oramos. Amen. Or, or, oración. Harabraso corrabasata. Amen and amen. Glory, glory. So, <laughs> It's going to be awesome, friends. So, amen. Well, lift up your hands. Father, thank you <laughs> for, <laughs> for the glory of God. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you. <laughs> amen and amen. All right, listen, I want to talk to some things here in the name of Jesus. Talk to you about some things. Well, good to see you all on Facebook. Meta, it's been a hot minute. I'm excited for all that God's doing. God's doing a new thing. Amen. Listen, I want to talk about the great deception. And really, this is more than the debacle debate that happened yesterday with Cacklin, communist Hera, Harris, excuse me, <laughs> and with President Donald J. Trump. You know, I mean, even the dogs and cats and ducks are crying out MAGA, right? And no, you can't fact check that. I mean, you can't try to. But, you know, it's it's the truth, you know, so stop lying. We need to understand there's a spirit of deception uh, that's been released on the earth and in America. And there are, uh, you know, so many groups of people, prophets, so-called false prophets, that, uh, you know, are only saying, preaching, prophet, lying, what your ears want to hear, what the tickling of the ears want to hear. And so we need to be aware of this pandering spirit where they're really moving in the soulish realm in carnality rather than biblical truth or rather than the spirit. And, uh, you know, I'm shocked to just see the stupidity of people's own opinions. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. You, you take ownership, right, of that. You can't blame a demon for giving you that type of uh, intellectual, uh, you know, intellectual nuance. But, you know, people will believe whatever they want to believe. We're in the days where people will call good evil and evil good. And, you know, that's an obvious, right? But I'm shocked to see the state of the church. The state of the church, what is going on? Friends, let me tell you, in midst of exposure, there's also revelation of glory. In midst of exposing of people's hearts, people's hearts and motives, in the midst of exposing uh, and shaking 
in the middle of that, there's also revelation of the glory and the goodness of God. So yes, it's a double-edged sword. Yes, it is both bitter and sweet. Yes, it is an exposure of the sheep or exposure of the goats, but it's a revelation of the sheep, of the true followers of Jesus, of the false prophets of Baal or the prophets that have not yet bowed their knees to Baal, like the 7,000 that God said to Elijah. Don't be discouraged. Amen. But the spirit of deception is really uh, a potion of witchcraft. Okay. Now, if I'm talking to you, I want to say amen because this is going to cost you some friends. This is going to cost you some friendships. It might even cost you some business. It might cost you popularity. It might, it's going to cost you because loving the truth will cost you. And being on the side of God, you know, it's really not about right or left side. Are you on the right side, the left side? It's not about any side. It's are you on God's side? And that's what the angel of the Lord said to Joshua. Are you on the side of God? I don't know about you, but I want to be on God's side. I don't want to be on the right side. I want to be on God's side. And God is pro-life. God is pro-freedom. God is pro-true democracy. God is pro freedom of protection of yourself and of your family god amen is not pro communism is not pro social but anyways i'm really not trying to go too political right now but there is a spirit of deception in the church not just america and the world but in the church but jesus said that this will be a sign of the time so let's go into the word of god um i believe right now hear me there is a separation and in my 7M Glory Equip, our Zoom, just a few hours ago, I talked about relationships. And I talked about that in every new season, there's a shaking or an upgrade of relationships, right? And uh, because people represent either your future or your past. And whenever there's a shaking or an upgrade of relationships, it means that you're coming into a new season. And even as we're in the last month of uh, the Hebrew calendar in Alol, the, this Hebrew month, Alol and September, and we're about to step into Yom Kippur and the 10 days of awe, there's shaking, but there's exposure, but there's also revelation. So in midst of this shaking and exposure, the Lord is wanting us to be aware of this spirit of deception. Are you deceived? Are you believing in a lie? Are you believing in the father of lies? Are you drunk under the potion of Jezebel? And unfortunately, way too many churches are drunk under the potion of Jezebel. Well, you know what? I, I wasn't gonna go into this, but let's, let's go into this first and foremost. My gosh. Amen and amen. Look at this, friends. Revelation 2.22. If you're with me today, say amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the 55 people that are with me right now. Revelation 2.20. But I have this against you that you tolerate. Ah, uh, that woman named Kamala. Sorry. That man named Biden, who's really an Ahab and opened the door to the Jezebel spirit. I mean, he didn't. You know, it was really the Obamas. Was it the Obamas? Or was it us that opened and voted for Obama and opened that door to anyways? But I have this against you that you tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and eat their food, sacrifice to idols. Look at this. Pr uh, seducing. All right. Uh, so you know what that? What are they doing at the DNC, the Democratic National Convention? What are they doing? They're doing abortions outside? They're uh, giving men vasectomies? Real men, not women who think they identify as men, so they have to get vasectomies? What the heck is going on? Right? So I have this against you, and this is against the Church of Tiatria. By her teaching, she misleads my servants 
into sexual immorality. And this is what God said, I'm just against you. Are you allowing, are you tolerating Jezebel to be in your church, in your home? To be, come on somebody, in your political party? Are you allowing the spirit of Jezebel to be present and to manifest, right? What's going on? Now, I, I want to go to one more one more uh, rebuke or one more love uh, comment that Yeshua makes to a church here because Jesus says, you know, I have this against you, right? So praise the Lord. Raman I have this against you. It's time to repent, says God. Um, look at this. All right. Oh my gosh. Revelation chapter two. One, one more time. Are you with me today? Amen. Look at this here. And then we're going to go on. Uh, this is totally left wing. I should say right wing. But I have a few things against you. And now this is speaking to the church in Pergamum, okay? In Revelation 2, once again, chapter 2, verse 4, 14 to 15. I have a few things. Uh-oh. Now the Lord is saying, I have a few things. To the Pergamum church, it was, I have this one thing. Now it's a few things to another church. Oh, snap. I got a few things against you. You have some there in your church, America. You have some there in your church. Come on, somebody, who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, so they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. So also, you have some who hold the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Now, obviously, Balaam is a warlock, witchcraft. Balaam committed, omitted sorcery. So a twisting of God's words, a twisting of the supernatural spiritual realm. And the Nicolaitans are, of course, a it's an occultic group. So it is a false doctrine, a cult. And now Jesus is speaking to the church here in Pergamum. I got a few things against you. All right. Uh, Smyrna or Tiatra, you're you're tolerating Jezebel, and you're being seduced away to do immoral things. But Church of Pergamum, why are you believing in witches and warlocks and false prophets? Why are you stuck under this cursed delusion of these occultic religious groups? Amen. Now, there's a lot of nonsense going on today, friends. A lot of nonsense. And God has truly shaken up the church. He's truly cleansing the prophetic. Amen. He's shaking the White House. Amen. Shana broka tanabra. Now we need to hear this because these are times to pray. We need to be alert. We need to watch and pray. And we need to be aware of Satan's tactics. Now, let's go to the gist of what I want to talk about today. Amen. Are you with me today? Praise God. Continue to let me know where you're watching from. And do yourself a favor and Share this on your wall. Praise God. Let's break the 100 mark today. All right. 2 Thessalonians. All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. And I wrote three different translations here. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. What's false? The lie. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. Why? Because the Bible says that he will give them over, give us over to our lustful desires, to our flesh. All right? So here the Lord is saying, uh, let's go here, Romans 124. Romans 124. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their heart to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. So eventually the Lord allows us to have whatever we want. He allows the world. He says, okay, you want that? Go ahead, take it. 
I'm not going to, listen friends, hear me. There is a moment where the grace of God will lift. Yes, his grace is endless and, 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 and it's forever. It's unlimited. However, there is a time where the door on the ark of Noah will be closed. There is a set time in the heavens that only the Father knows. But there's a set time where we will all come before God at the throne of judgment. Amen. But you see, His grace is merciful. But there's a time and moment where the Lord says, all right, you know what? Now think about this. It's scary. I'm no longer going to pursue you. I'm no, this is the Lord, hear me. I'm no longer going to pursue you. I'm no longer going to fight for you. But here, here take it. Do whatever you want. And the Lord wipes his hands clean. And he says, do whatever you want. Did not Jesus, wow, did not Jesus say, Sharamandiarabata, Sharamatataraba? Did not Jesus say, Satan is wanting to sift you as wheat? Hey, Dr. Mike, good to see you, man. Give my love to your family there. Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. So there's a sifting. And Satan has asked for you, wants you. So there's a time and season where eventually the Lord says, I'm going to, I'm going to give you up to the lust of your desires. I'm no longer going to keep fighting, pursuing, giving grace, another chance, another opportunity. Are you hearing me? And in this season, the hand of grace is going to lift off of many people. Man, I feel the sword of God. I feel the sword of heaven right now. His hand will be raised and released from many people. Amen. Many, many to kill a person. The writing's on the wall. Oh, you Belshazzar. Oh, you who mocked the Lord. Oh, you who have stolen the vessels of God from God's holy temple and you drink from it, mocking the one true God of Israel. Are you kidding me? You think that's going to be well with you? You think you can go away with that? Many, many to kill a person. The writing is on the wall. The finger of God is against you. Don't you know that with the whole scenario situation with Pharaoh in the book of Exodus, that in the, in the beginning of the scenario with Pharaoh, the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But do you know eventually the Bible clearly specifically writes Pharaoh hardened his heart? You see, there's a, a moment with Pharaoh where the Lord is supernaturally, supernaturally, God is supernaturally hardening the heart of Pharaoh so that God can show his power, his glory, his mercy, his miracles, and he can set the Israelites free. But then there's a moment cha, where Pharaoh chooses to harden his heart. God will give us up to the lust of our flesh, to the lust of our desire. So there's a great falling away. Great falling away. Now, I know that this message today, it, it may feel a little heavy. But I have good news for you. You can be delivered. You can be set free from the spirit of stupid. You can be set free. And Shana, uh, I mean, come on, somebody. The Lord is giving us an opportune time, a Kairos moment. Turn to me, repent. Wake up from this delusion, this great deception. All right, now let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2.11. Thanks for all the tags, Prophetess Yvonne. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2.11. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what's false. Don't you know that there are false prophets? 
Don't you know that even in the Bible, in the Old Testament, there are prophets who prophesied or only said, hear me, what the kings wanted to hear. Amen. Shout about what the kings wanted to hear. And of course, that's why the prophet Elijah was called an enemy because the prophet Elijah spoke the truth. Let's go, let's go to this verse here. Are you with me today? Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Kings 22, verse 8. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire the Lord, Micaiah, the son of Imla, but I hate him. Oh, shut up. Uh, I hate Micaiah, the son of Imla, for he never prophesies good concerning me but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. So there are all these prophets, prophesying, tickling the ears, making them feel good. All these, listen, just because it's popular doesn't mean it's right. Just because your friends are doing it doesn't mean you should. Just because the fake media says so, uh, what, get another jab? What, mask on, mask off? I mean, how many how many layers of masks is going to keep you saying, I'm sorry, that thing is suffocating you already. You know, I mean, the delusion of people just going like sheep, led away to the slaughter, such sheeplings. And here, there's one prophet named Micaiah, and he stands up, and only prophesies the truth, the word of the Lord. Come on, is there not somebody that will give me a different report than what MSNBC, ABC, CNN, what all these demonic, communistic, puppeteered, bought, sold out to China, what this fake propaganda is lying? Is there anybody else who's speaking the truth? Is there anybody else? Because they keep speaking nonsense. They keep telling me what I want to hear. The flattering. Such flattery. You know, Jezebel is the queen of flattery. That's what false prophecy does. Oh, you're going to live. Oh, you're going to do so great. Oh, you're so awesome. Oh, rah, bah, bah, bah. And the king said, is there not anybody? who has a different word than all these hundreds of other prophets, and it was Micaiah. But the king said, I hate this guy. I hate this prophet. I hate this ministry. I hate these people. Oh, why can't you just be liberal? Oh, why can't you just, just be quiet? Why are you always making us look bad? Why are you always contesting us? Just fold with the crowd. Just be one of us, bro. But the devil is a liar. Oh, Samson, beware of Delilah. Oh, Samson, beware of the one who slowly seduces and entices so that she could get your secret to the anointing. Friends, the enemy is after the anointing. The enemy is after purity. The enemy is out there to steal, kill, and destroy, to take what God has given you. That's what the enemy's doing. Hallelujah. I feel such a fire. I feel such a fire today. Maybe 7 p.m. is not a good time for me to go live on Facebook, but I'm here right now releasing the word of the Lord. Here, 2 Th Thessalonians 2.11. One more time. Are right, you hearing me, friend? 2 Thessalonians 2.11. Jesus. Here, this word, deluding force or delusion or the great deception. What this word means in the Hebrew is plané. I want to say plané. Now, this is interesting. This word is plané. And what this word means is a wandering spirit. It means deceit, delusion, error, and sin. 
It is the deviant behavior, a departure from what God says is true or is an error. So if you are under deception or delusion, in the in the Greek, excuse me, in the Greek it is plane or planeo. And what this means is you're wandering from the truth. You're wandering, you're in error, you're in sin, and you have departed from what God says is pure and is true. So there are many that are departing from the truth. There are many that are leaving the truth. There are many that are leaving the true church, many that are being swayed, deceived, they're wandering in this error and in this sin. You need to know what the Word of God says. Now, there's a spirit of deception, a spirit of delusion. And they, the, that's, that's how the enemy works, such a trickery con artist. We'll put it in the skin color, in the facial, in the gender face of what you like. The enemy will give you whatever you want, whatever you like. He knows how to pull on the strings of your heart. He knows, he knows what you like. He's been watching you. And the Lord will tempt you, will sway you, will give you what you did not the enemy say that if you bow down to me, then I will, I will give you the kingdoms. If you turn the stone into bread, then I'll give you this out. Did not the enemy, amen. So hear me now. There are many people that are selling their souls to the devil. There are many people that are putting their name down on a contract straight to the pit of hell. There are many people that are trading their bowl of soup for a false spiritual witchcraft. They're, they're giving their bowl of soup to be in bed with Jezebel. Temporary, inst it's instant fame. Then you get money, you get power influence, but you're selling your soul. Yeah, you're in the so-called cool party with, you know, uh, I don't even know these people, these celebrities that are shaking their 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 behind on national stage. Are you kidding me? Evil, gross, disgusting. There's children around. Well, what do you think? Huh? It's what Jezebel does. So there's a great falling away. Number one, number one, hear me now. Number one. There's a great falling away. There's a great falling away. What is um, what is the signs of the times according to Matthew 24? Amen. Let's go to that verse. That'll probably be my last. I don't think it'll be my last verse, but let's go over to Matthew 24. All right. And here the disciples come up to Jesus and say, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? All right, what will be the sign of your coming uh, and of the end of the age? So here we go. Matthew 24. Amen. Matthew 24, 4 to 6. And by the way, this broadcast today is only for those who love truth. Right? All right. Matthew 24, 4 to 6. Jesus answered, said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for there will be many who come in my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. Once again, deceit, deception. Okay, think about that. Deception is the first sign of the time. Deception. World, mass worldwide hysteria, deception. <clears throat> That is the first sign of the time, that there will be deception, great deception, rampant deception, worldwide deception. Amen. And this word deception, yeah, and look at it. It's planeo in the Greek, my, my, my. Did we not just read off the word? It means to go astray or to get off course. Sheesh. Wow. Oh. It means to go astray or to go off course. Holy Ghost. It means you're wandering. 
Rama Marati Arabrosuto. Jesus. Just lift up your hands. Father, thank you. Rama Sierra Broso Karabrasata. This deception, this error, this delusion. And you know what? Listen, Matthew 27, verse 64. Matthew 27, verse 64. Wow. It says this last deception will be worse than the last. Worse than the first. It's just talking about Jesus' resurrection. But Father, I ask you right now, save and deliver our children. Save and deliver the prodigals. Father, I thank you for a spirit of truth. The spirit of revelation. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost. Rebisi, touch our lives. Save us. Deliver us. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare your family will be saved. Your family will wake up from this delusion, this planeo, this wandering spirit that goes astray and departs from the truth, I declare salvation's coming. In Jesus' name, if you believe and receive that, say amen. So listen up, let me finish this up. Number one, there is a great falling away. There's a great falling away. I'm, I'm very encouraged to see Gen Z and you know all these worship protests or worship parades out in the public space, that's great. But are they reading their Bibles? Are they living holy? You know, I don't, so what about a one-time pop-up event? That's great. It's good for social media, right, TikTokers? But, like, do you really have a genuine, authentic relationship with God? So what if you're viral on social media and you're reaching hundreds of millions of people? So what? But you're not living holy. You're not living pure. You, you really don't read the Word. You don't know the Word. Do you know how many, like, you know, people are shocked right now in Hollywood and in the entertainment industry that faith-based movies, you like me doing this? Faith-based, faith-based movies are doing so well. So what are they trying to do? They're trying, Hollywood, the leftist elitists are trying to tap in now to the Christian movement to make money, exploit, and deceive and control. And they're doing that in Tennessee with, with uh, contemporary CCM music. They're doing that. Hallelujah. It's that universalism spirit. It's that spirit of the one world order, the antichrist spirit, the one world government. It's that spirit. So there's a great falling away. And many people are falling away from the truth, from the traditions, of our forefathers and mothers. Many, there's a great falling away. I mean, church attendance is at an all time low in America. All time low. <clears throat> you might say, well, you know what? Listen, social media is different from being a member of a local church. Amen. Does not the local church still matter in America? Does not the local church, local establishment, the ecclesia, where you come out of your personal home and you meet together in a public place, does that not still matter? For the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia. It doesn't say social media online church. It says the ecclesia, meeting the public places. Because it is a, on a, sense, a protest or a public declaration of something. Amen. Melissa Sophia says, I'm going to be in Sacramento tomorrow. So there's a great falling away. Following, all right. Why? Because of the lust of their desires, the lust of their flesh. So God's giving them over. You want that? Hey, you think you're right? You think you're so smart? Okay, there's the door. You think you're so anointed? There's the door. You think you're so gifted? Do you now? Huh? You think you're so important? You're you're replaceable, man. You and I, we are replaceable. Yeah, yeah I know there's teachings, and I believe that too. But it's a double-edged sword. You're, you're, we're really not that important. I mean, there, yeah, there's one of you, so feel special. But there's also one snowflake. 
So are you calling yourself a snowflake? Huh? <laughs> bam, bam. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying that there's a great fall away. Listen, hear me now. Some of you, you got to let them go. Let them go. Let them leave. Peace, deuces. Sayonara. If the Lord is able to say, I cut you loose, then why not Jesus? Why not the Lord? Sil Sil, please look in our website. Thanks so much. So number one, there's a great following. Number two, there is an exposure and revelation of what's truly in people's hearts, of what is truly in the hearts of people, all right? Number two, an exposure and revelation of what's going on in our own hearts. I'm telling you, friends, right now what's going on in the world, in America, in the church. It is hilarious. It's hilarious. I mean, it, people's hearts are being exposed, man. I mean, are you really a believer? Do you really have the Holy Ghost? Or is that is that some hokey ghost? Do you really have the Holy Spirit? Or is that some weird mixed spirit of your flesh and of your culture? Huh? Is it kingdom or is it culture? Is it? And so we're living in such a phenomenon right now where just like the angel of the Lord, the commander of the army of God said to Joshua, it doesn't matter if I'm on your side or not. It matters, are you on the side of God? Are you with the Bible? Do you still believe in the B-I-B-L-E, the word of God? Do you still believe? in this divinely orchestrated infallible historical text that was seamed together by the hands of God. What, how many, 66 books, how many different authors are there? 50, 60 different authors throughout a time span differentiation of about three, 4,000 years it was written, pieced together, excuse me, not three, 4,000, but around uh, maybe at least 2,000 years, pieced together in three different continents. Amen. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. So right now, we're seeing, Arabata, we're seeing such a exposure and revelation of what's in people's hearts. Let me ask you this. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Is it the love of money? Is it this fake idea of success? What's in your heart? Do you really love God? Uh, or do you love what God does for you? Do you really love Jesus? And listen, friends, I'm, I'm sorry. This is coming up very, very strong right now. But it's not an easy message to preach. And I am pretty physically tired right now. Which means that I'm going to be a little bit more rambunctious. Obnoxious. Amen. But you see, hallelujah. There's an exposure. What's it? Do you really believe? Did God say? <laughs> did God say? Did the Lord say you'll be healed? Did, did, did the Lord say you should go to Mexico? You should go to Africa? Did the Lord say? <sighs> oh, now when the going gets tough. Forget about it. I'm gonna leave the word behind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget about it. You know, you know, you know. God can do it whenever He wants. He doesn't need to forget about it. <laughs> I'm telling you, many people are leaving their posts. Stop leaving your post. That's how Ahab opened up for Jesse Wesley Bessie. Stop leaving your post. An exposure of what's really in our hearts. Do you really believe God for finances? Are you kidding me? Money and finances is the lowest in the economy of the kingdom. Are you kidding me? You're still stressed about money? You're still worried about how you're going to pay your bills? And listen, I don't want to seem rude or malicious, but are you serious? That is the lowest 
concern of God's kingdom. Yes, he's concerned to take care of you. Yes, he loves you. Absolutely. But stop being so carnal, y'all. Are you? Though, ah, what God cares about most is souls and bringing glory to Jesus. It's souls. And you're here whining and wimping and crying about, you know, I don't got money. Well, why don't you work? Do something. Don't you got two hands? Don't you got a cabeza brain up in there? Do something. Don't you got the Holy Ghost? Karabahaya. Don't you pray in tongues? Don't you got the Word of God? Don't you got Google and Siri? Do something. Hallelujah. There's such exposure and revelation of what's in people. So I'm telling you. And you know what? God is a good tester, man. Uh, he is a good tester. And you know what? I like to test people too. You know, I, I have a way. You know, and I've learned it from some of the generals. But I have a way of boop. No, not poop. Boop. Press those buttons. Ah, huh? what triggers you, huh? Huh? Oh. Did I see did I did I see your eyes? Give me that face. Huh? Did I see an attitude? Say what? Did I hear a change in the tone of your voice? What 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 do you what do you mean? Right? There, there's a way the Holy Ghost will press on an area of our hearts to expose and reveal what's really in our hearts. Do you love God? Do you love money? Mammon? Do you do you really love God or do you love yourself? All right. Number three, hallelujah. Number three. Number one, there's a great falling away. A spirit of delusion. God's given people over to the lust, the desires of their hearts. Number two, exposure and revelation of exposure and revelation of what is truly in the hearts of men and women. Listen, don't be surprised. Hear me. Last last comment on this. But don't be surprised when people suddenly leave your life, when people suddenly disappear. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Don't be so, because dad was always in their heart. But there had to be a fullness of time for that to be exposed, for that to be revealed. Amen. Are you hearing me? Praise God. So number one, the great falling away. Number two, exposure and revelation of our own hearts. Right now I'm talking to you about the great delusion deception but also what else is going on right now hallelujah and number three and this is what i really want to talk about which is the opposite of deception and delusion but there is a repentance taking place and a love for truth and revelation now let me tell you friends let me tell you, and then I'm going to bring this to a close, and I'll pray with you. Amen. Let me tell you, there is a study that I saw, that's, and the study said that in Gen Z, I'm a millennial, I'm 33, but in Gen Z, uh, more boys or young men are being conservative while Gen Z girls, young women, are becoming more liberal, in America, at least. So that there was a study uh, that came out that in Gen Z, boys are becoming more conservative, girls are becoming more liberal in America. Interesting thought, huh? interesting study analysis there. But I'm sharing this because there's something fresh happening with this generation, with the young people of America, something fresh happening. But I could see the spirit of repentance. I could see a wave of revival. I could see, hallelujah, the love for truth and revelation coming forth. And in this season of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, that were coming up yesterday, shaking exposure yesterday, judgment coming forth the tipping point of the bowls of heaven are 
going to start overflowing and everyone will receive their due harvest. Because God said September is a month of supernatural harvest. Amen. Let me just stretch real quick. Ugh. Amen. <laughs> but you see, in midst of the exposure of our hearts and the great deception, the great delusion, the great falling away, in midst of all of that, there is revelation coming. Revelation of Jesus. The spirit of truth is being released. Come on, lift up your hands. We're going to pray in tongues. I'm telling you, friends, there's dreams being released. Visions. Ramata, God's about to open the heavens. Open heaven's world. God's about to unveil things in your life and all around you. Shamatarabra. Because he is separating. Hear me now, revelation equals separation. Revelation equals separation. And the higher you go in realms of revelation, the more you must be separated from the world, from the filth, and from people who are not ready because revelation is heavy. Revelation is costly. Amen. Friends, we're going to see repentance, which means renewing our minds, changing, turning our minds. Repentance truly means to turn our minds. So in midst of deception, there's an awakening. In midst of darkness, there's light. In midst of falsivity, there's truth. In midst of false prophets, there's genuine prophets. In midst of the tickling of the ears, there is the cutting open of hearts. In midst of this is nonsense. God is turning minds and hearts. I want to declare there's a turning. I prophesy God is turning things around in your life, in your family. A supernatural turning is coming right now, right here, right now, in your life. In the name of Jesus, show, I prophesy the winds of God, Rekasa, the winds of heaven. Hallelujah. To blow away all the shaft, all the dust, all of the nonsense of the world that's been trying to be on you. And Shika Rebe Soto. The Lord says, get ready for a circle change. Get ready for a shift. God says, get ready because I am turning things around in your life. Hallelujah. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy. Stop listening. To the father of lies, you can do it. Come on, lift up your hands. I release faith and the fear of the Lord. I release faith. Listen, I got an image when I just said tickling of the ears. I got an image of a duolos. And what is a duolos? It is the Greek word in the New Testament for bond servants. Ah. And the bond servant pierces their right ear to the wall so that a piece of their ear is left on the wall. In fact, it will be left on the pillar of the house. But my ears are pierced to you. I open my big Dumbo ears to you so I can hear and receive the word of the Lord. My ears will be quickened to you, Holy Ghost. My ears may be sensitive to pick up the frequency of your voice. Hallelujah. I declare now God is cleaning out your ear. Come on. Take out that earwax in Jesus' name. Rebe soto rama. Haramandiara broso toro broso. Ramande Borobroso Tamatar Kier Brosa Jamandera Brosa. There's such a great deception in the church in America. I don't know how people can even vote for cackling communist Comrade Harris, an illegitimate presidential candidate. Illegitimate. Not even one vote. 
Uh-uh. Unconstitutional, which means it's illegal. I don't know how people can be so deceived. Do you know why? It's because they got their head shoved up the place where the sun don't shine. That's why. If you only pulled your head out of the dirt, come on, somebody. If you only pulled your head out of the mud, then maybe you would actually think and see like a regular, normal person. But you're deceived and you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a, a prophet, a man, woman, a God, a believer? I doubt it. I doubt it. I highly doubt it because we're not of the same spirit. Then. We're not of the same spirit. Then. Amen. Someone say amen. Lift up your hand. Father, I release fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. From the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Release the fire of God. Jama tara brusoko. Ziba kara brusa tana brata. Ramandiara bruso tora braka. Rebe so ramandiara bruso tala blaka. Jaba ki ara bruso to. Rebe so ramata kara brata. Ramandi ara brata tara brata. Jamandi ara brata tara bra. Reka tala blasa tara brata. Thank you, Lord. Listen, God's releasing the spirit of an impartation of the spirit of revelation. It's going to be revelation coming to you. So receive that right now. Receive that by faith in Jesus' name. Good to see you, Phoebe. Receive that by faith in Jesus' name. I want to repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, deliver me from any lies or any influence of deception. I break any covenant or any tie with false prophecy, with evil, and with wickedness. I break every tie in Jesus' name, and I repent, and I bind it up, and I revoke it in the Spirit of God by the blood of truth, by the blood of Jesus, excuse me. Lead me, Holy Spirit, in the spirit of truth and help me to love your truth, to love your word. Come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord some prayer. Does anybody feel a shift right now? Man, even I, I felt something lived off. I, I feel like there's a shift. Anybody feel a shift right now? My gosh. Reka Sarabrata. Rebecca, the devil is a liar. I said, the devil is a liar. Iba Rabato Rakata. Manda Rebe Sutora Brata Karabrasa Tarabrasata. Yes, Lord. Purify, fortify by the fire of God. Arabasata Yarabata. I declare every snake in your circle will be bound and be exposed. Hallelujah. Reka satarablata. Reka sotarabata raboto. Somebody shout hallelujah. Reka sotarablata. Rebe reba sotarablata. Holy Ghost. Cha. Ashley Della Garza says, I'm shaking. Shurabata in the Holy Ghost. Lurabasi arabrasa. I was waving my hands. Yes, I felt a shift. Lynette Eon. Every counterfeit spirit, every witchcraft spirit, be bound now in the name of Jesus. Listen, lift up your hand. Bam! Some of you are feeling light right now. That's called the spirit of light. The light of the Holy Ghost. It's called revelation. Hallelujah. 
Some of you were feeling heavy or tired, and but God just broke the thing off of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, people of God, tomorrow, hello, Joshua Hubble, tomorrow, I'm going to be up in Sacramento. I will be in Northern California all weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I would love to see some of you if you're in the NorCal area. The next week, we go over to Mexico, Tijuana y Mexicali. Por la grande cruzado, por, how do you say souls in Spanish? Por, por uh, la vida, por vidas de personas, por la gloria de la salvación. Para la gloria de Dios. Amen and amen. Listen, friends, I want to say, I love you. I bless you. Thanks for watching today. Share, like, subscribe. I'll see you soon. God bless. In the name of Jesus, if you enjoyed this word today, say amen, like, and share. God bless. See you soon. Oh, hold up. Hold up. One last announcement. One last announcement. Hold up. Hold up. All right. Hey, friends. Monday, I am doing a free Zoom webinar. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Listen, guys. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the High Holy Days is right around the corner. And um, interesting. I don't know why they did it like this. Interesting. Why is it 18 to 23? But anyways. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. I see what happened. Hey guys, I'm going to do a whole Zoom webinar on the prophetic word of the Hebrew New Year 5785 and even for 2025, amen. And now you must register, uh, but the Zoom webinar is free, okay? Listen, the Lord has given me a very clear word, download, and uh, uh, on what's going to happen in 5785 and 2025, the new Hebrew year and even 2025, and uh, celebrate with us in the Zoom webinar as we cross over into Rosh Hashanah and the High Holy Days, a new Hebrew year, amen. How you start a thing determines how you continue. So start in the glory online with us at the Zoom webinar. It's totally free. It's gonna be this coming Monday evening, amen, this coming Monday evening. So I would love for you to join us, amen. If you're joining, I want you to comment joining. Or if you're interested, I want you to comment interested. This is, this is going to be very important, okay? It's going to be very, very important uh, Zoom webinar because we're going to honor God in his holy day. Remember, God has holy days, right? And this, actually, Rosh Hashanah is the birthday of creation, right? Um, one of the names of Rosh Hashanah or the new Hebrew year is Yom Harat Olam, which means the birthday of creation. Of creation so this is the birthday of creation uh, Rosh Hashanah the head of the year so make sure you share make sure you join it's gonna be next Monday it's free but you got to register online at our website amen so wonderful Denise Ashley Tim Juan Susan Cece amen Carrie awesome Dana Elizabeth Marilyn Nuvolovo awesome interested Denise amen yeah, yeah, John, does a little bit of this. Sorry, I just uh, shared your name. Praise God. So this Monday, the prophetic word for 5785-2025, Zoom webinar, it's going to be awesome. So make sure you jump in in Jesus' name. Well, friends, I love you. God bless you. Shalom.